It must be that time again. Oh, it's story time, bitches. Let's go. I have lived in North Dakota for all but three years of my life. So 20 years now. 20 years of living in this frigid, bald spot of America. <laughs> I guess bald spot is maybe a bit of a bad thing to say because there's so much grass. So it's quite literally the opposite of a bald spot. Anyway, I basically what I'm trying to say is that I grew up in a small town of about 2000 that grew like that, like doubled in size after the oil boom. Like the town was puny. And it still is, to be honest. Like even just a, if there's not a single stoplight in all of town. There is one stoplight in this town, and it isn't even a stoplight. It's just a yellow blinking light that flashes at the intersection of both highways. It just blinks yellow for all eternity. It's not even a stoplight, dude. <laughs> That's the closest thing that we got here. The point that I'm trying to make is that this is a small town in rural America. I'm tr in, 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 in northern rural America. Do you, do you see what I'm trying to insinuate by now? I'm trying to insinuate that there are not a lot of people of color in this town. There have not been, and there still isn't, to be honest. After the oil boom, there was a ton of people that came in for work. But ever since oil started slowing down, some of them have stayed, some of them have gone. But the point that I'm trying to make is that there are not a lot of people, especially of African descent, that live in this town. Back when it was just the uh, oil money people that were coming in, there was exactly one black family that lived in this town. And they were really chill. I really liked them. But um, the uh, person that's the subject of this story is the uh, teenage daughter of this family. Now, you're probably thinking that this is going to go in a bad direction. I assure you. I assure you. I did not even come close to tapping that ass. Even though it was a fine ass, I will admit. You gotta look sometimes. What happened in the story is that I knew that she really didn't have so much in the way of friendships. Very sadly, indeed. Because this was around sophomore year of high school. And I believe that she was... I believe she was a freshman, so a year below me when, when she came. And when you come to a new town in high school, I mean, you've seen all of the Tumblr um, fan fiction stories, Sonic in high school kind of things. When you're a teenager and you move to a new school, you're kind of shit out of luck. It's, it's very difficult to make friendships at that age, especially. So she was basically the only black person in the entire high school. Uh, everyone else. I don't think anyone ever was overtly racist against her, at least in my presence. I certainly hope not. But the reason I'm telling you this story is because there was one interaction that I, not even really an interaction that I had with her. And I would call it the, the one time, the most racist thing that I have ever accidentally done. For all intents and purposes, I, I, from what I know, she was an absolutely pleasant person. She was super chill. But we really never had any meaningful interactions. But the one thing, the most racist thing that I have ever done on pure accident. This is probably the most racist thing that I've ever done, period. And it was on pure accident. I don't even know if she remembers this. But I do. And I feel like a piece of shit whenever I think about it. Because one day, we got out of school early due to a blizzard, which was ite. However, um, when I was leaving the school, I took the route that I usually do out of the school. You come, you, I go out of the south parking lot and drive east. And you come around this curve to get out of the parking lot. And there's a huge, not really a huge hill, but a, but a significant hill. That you have to climb up in order to get to the stop sign. I actually slid through that stop sign on a different time when I when we had when we got out of school early during a blizzard, but that's an entirely different story. And when I was coming out of that uh, when I was coming through that corner and going towards the hill, I saw someone stuck on the hill. They were driving a two-wheel drive pickup, and I had never seen this pickup in the parking lot before. 
Because back when I was in high school, I kept tabs on what everybody else's car was so I could, you know, feel better or worse about myself depending on which car they had. And then if I ever saw, you know, them out on the town, I could easily pick them out from the, uh, from the crowd. So I knew just, I knew at least half of the cars and you know you come into the, you go to the you go to the high school and like i'm always going out to lunch so i'm always in the parking lot so i see all the cars and i see the same ones every day but i didn't recognize this one and i knew that it was stuck so it was stuck in the middle of the road obviously because it couldn't get up the hill because it was a two-wheel drive and the ground and the road was slick so i pulled up i did not pull up alongside i just drove on to the oncoming side of the road and was just planning on driving past and completely bypassing it because I was driving a 1995 Corolla with a spoiler. I was not going to be able to tow this two-wheel drive pickup up a slick hill. It wasn't going to happen, all right? So I just drove up onto the oncoming lane and just went by and completely bypassed it. I had no intention of getting out and helping. Also because I probably had to work. I couldn't get stuck doing that anyway. And since I didn't know who was driving the pickup, when I drove past, I kind of, you know, squinted. Kind of leaned in and squinted and tried to see who it was. And lo and behold, it was the black girl. It was the black girl that was in the high school. And I was like, oh, that's who it is. And so, I remember this part specifically. This is the memory that always comes back, is that when I drove around the car and I looked and the, the pickup and I drove and I looked into the window, I locked eyes with her as I went by and like I'm just kind of processing what I'm seeing. So my expression is completely blank when I'm doing this. And when I get past, that's only when I registered the fact that, oh, it was that chick. I should probably go back and help, but, like, I can't do anything because I'm in a Corolla. So I drive off, and that is the end of the actual experience. Looking back, I realize that from her perspective, she was stuck on this road with no hope of getting up. She's probably, you know, freaking out or whatever. Maybe, maybe that's a bit much, but she's definitely not in a good situation. She's definitely in need of assistance. And she sees me come out, and, like, I'm the only one that's coming by, because I'm always out of the school first, because fuck school. <laughs> so I'm already leaving, and I'm going off to work. And she sees me come by, and she's thinking, oh, maybe this, this person will help me. And she sees me just completely bypass her, look into the, her vehicle, lock eyes with her, give her no expression other than a blank stare, and then drive off. That probably looked incredibly shitty on my end. That probably looked like I was making a statement that I definitely was not making. Okay? Let me be absolutely clear. The only black teenager probably in the entire county. And I just come up onto her in a time of need. And I completely ignore her. And I don't even I don't even completely ignore her. Because I didn't know who was driving the pickup. I wanted to know. So I probably was peering in. My eyes were probably squinting. My brow was probably furrowed. I probably looked really aggressive. I was probably like, yeah, know your place. Know your fucking place. That's probably what it looked like. And whenever I look back on that, I think of that so often because of how shitty it looked. Because of how shitty it seemed. And just the entire circumstance as a whole. I don't know if I'm... I don't know if I'm just a fucking lightweight when it comes to offending people. Because I don't like doing it. As much as I love pissing off Reddit, I try to avoid conflict as much as I possibly can. And on that day, I feel like I created conflict rather than averting it. If you can take anything away from this video, it's that... In all likelihood, you have accidentally been racist in the past, and it's best to just not think about it. Because in all likelihood, she probably doesn't even remember that. Like, for the, li for like the months in after, the months after this interaction, she probably thought of me as a real piece of shit. But, like, you know, 
you, you're going to grow and you're going to change. And this was six years ago, as I remember it. This was probably six or seven years ago that this, that this interaction actually took place. I mean, she's moved on. I should move on to, and everyone else should move on. Like, okay, people make mistakes is the moral of this video. Anyway, that is going to be a quick little uh, story time animation. Hope you enjoyed this little quickie. And yeah, this quickie, that 15 minutes long raw audio. Yeah, quickie. Anyway, thanks for watching. This has been Comic Cons Games, and I will see you in whatever it is I make next. Bye.